Hi, my name is Jeff Sisson, and I work at the New York Times as part of a team that builds the tools the new newsroom uses to publish our journalism. I hope to describe how our team uses open source technologies and Firestore to create a completely unique rich text editor for the New York Times. But first, I want to describe a radical position I've come to believe as a byproduct of our work on tools for the newsroom. Hear me out. Everyone deserves their own collaborative, rich text editor. So let me explain what I mean here. Rich text editors like Google Docs have made what you see is what you get style editing a seamless experience. This actually makes it harder to appreciate some of the complexity that underlies a pleasant, rich text editor. Most people just want it to work. They want to work in an editor that produces HTML-like documents which may include bold, italics, strike through, other emphasis. And they want to compose using paragraph lists, uh, possibly even tables or images or other more complex layouts. Even when just editing plain text, there are lots of subtleties that editors like Google Docs or Word handle for you. There's live as you type text suggestions for grammar or spelling errors, or the ability for others to comment on the document, or tracking the changes that you've made to a document over time. And it's now even a common assumption that if you're editing a rich text document in a browser, it must be networked, meaning anyone can view the changes as you're making them and contribute their own changes live. So all of this is obviously a lot. It's reasonable to wonder why anyone would want to create their own rich te text editor that does all of these things, rather than relying on one of the many capable text editors that exist, like Google Docs or Word, or even tools like Medium or WordPress. Uh, a little bit more detail on our work at the New York Times, where uh, the tools that we maintain for editors, producers, and reporters uh, facilitate publishing articles and our coverage of the news. So the New York Times has a huge newsroom. At any time of day, someone is working to report on world events in articles that are often published while that news is still happening. We've had a number of different CMSs over the years, and when we set out to build a new article editor, we knew that we wanted it to be collaborative first. Photo editors should be able to place photos while other editors are polishing a draft of the text ready to publish, and yet other editors may be readying new quotes or new information for later publishing. And all of this needs to be happening for users that are located in bureaus around the globe split amongst many different time zones. Enter Oak. So what is Oak? Oak is the name of the rich text editor we built that powers every article published by the New York Times. What are we looking at in this screenshot? Uh, in the white canvas in the center, you can see that the basic skeleton of an empty New York Times article exists. You have a headline, a summary, some bylines, and a timestamp. Below that, we have placeholder text that commands you to begin writing uh, where the innards of the article go. So things like paragraphs, images, videos, interactive graphics, diptychs, scrolling text and image combinations, contributor bylines, and much, much more. This is the basic canvas for Oak's rich text blocks. And to the left of that canvas, uh, there are extra textual tools like a spell check and validation for New York Times specific writing rules and a space for writing drafts. All of these things together are workflow tools that are specifically tuned to how the New York Times newsroom works. And very few of these features exist in other off-the-rack off rich text editors. So why did we build Oak from scratch rather than building something on top of a different proprietary editor? The New York Times has a specific editorial process that is very unique to itself. We use a style guide that governs how articles are written. There are rules for how obituary headlines are written, rules for the use of courtesy titles such as Mr. and Ms., and rules for the use of datelines like Washington in all caps at the top of an article to indicate that a reporter was actually working from a specific location. These editorial nuances are part of what contributes to the Times' unique voice. And building our own editor allowed us to incorporate these rules into how the editor works so that the newsroom can see feedback for an article as it's being written and edited. Before it's published, reporters may contribute a first draft of an article, then hand off to a first editor who may work with a second editor or copy editor. Some highly sensitive articles are even 
edited uh, in with a privacy mode so that only parts of the newsroom that are working on them uh, can see the articles prior to publication. All of these rules for around who can access a story and edit it at different parts of an article's editorial life cycle uh, were only able to be built into Oak because we were building an editor from scratch. And our editor also aims for what you see is what you mean fidelity. And what does that mean? So uh, when our editors are working in the Oak uh, article editor, all of the styles for headlines, paragraphs, and other elements that you see as a reader are also shown to them, meaning that the newsroom has instant feedback on exactly how their story will look when it's published. Many rich text editors are focused primarily on the editing, and so this ability to sort of see the shape of the article as it's being written has helped to change the kinds of articles that we publish. All of these features together are difficult to achieve in off-the-rack rich text editors, which is part of why most of Oak was built from scratch to accommodate our newsroom's needs. We want our reporters, editors, and producers to focus on contributing journalism and let the rich text editor itself do much of the heavy lifting around editorial workflow and document production. But we didn't attempt to build our editor alone. The main technical component that allows the New York Times, and of course you, if you want, to create the rich text editor of our dreams is called Prose Mirror. It's a set of open source JavaScript libraries de developed by Marine Haverbeck that do the hard parts of rich text editing in web browsers. The browser technology that most rich text editors rely on is something called content editable. And as a software spec, it's actually very messy and inconsistent. How input events like pastes, key presses, and selections are interpreted very wildly between different browsers. And there are many longstanding bugs and gotchas, even on modern browsers like Google Chrome. Prose Mirror abstracts around many of these inconsistencies, uh, which allows developers to work with straightforward primitives. You have a document that's represented by a node, a selection that uses a selection class, and changes to a document are represented by transforms and transactions. Prosmere also handles painting some of these updates to a rich text document into the DOM. When a document changes, whether that document is changed by text that you've typed into it or via a remote collaborating peer, Prosmere will make sure the DOM reflects the latest state of the document. In Prosmere, everything is a node, even the top-level document. Each top-level document node contains one or more children, each of which may contain their own children and have attributes. This document here on screen represents a very simple paragraph with the, the text, hello, world, bolded and italicized. But documents, of course, can be much more complex. Uh, so every article in the New York Times publishes contains many types of different nodes. And the purpose of the Oak Editor is to allow editors in the newsroom the flexibility to produce new combinations of nodes that may share some of the same node patterns with other articles, but may use different types of nodes or different orders of nodes to emphasize a particular structure of a story within an article. Here you can see what our readers would see for an article that was created in Oak and appears on our website about pollution in China. And here's that same article as it appears in the Oak Editor, along with a view of the node data structure that underlies the article. All of the rules for what types of document can contain uh, and their order live in something called a schema definition that Prosmere understands and is able to enforce as you make changes to the document. So whenever I'm reading a New York Times article, I often think about it and its underlying node structure and schema with a sort of x-ray view in my head. This article about curbing pollution starts with a header, and the header contains itself a headline a summary, a lead media node, and a byline node. And then the header is followed by a paragraph that contains text, itself contains a link, and so on and so forth. So Prosmere schema allows you to impose really far-fetched constraints on your document shape. It has its own language, which is a subset of regex that can mandate complex rules of adjacency for different types of nodes or constrain how many nodes of a specific type can be added in a specific position or in a row. This fine-grained control over what is valid for, for a rich text document unlocks many fascinating opportunities for creating rich text editors with experiences that are tuned to different kinds of documents that they were built for, 
So just to take some examples, you might have a haiku editor that has live feedback as you're typing about the number of syllables to, per line and constrains the lines as you type them. Or an ulipo editor where two people are working on the same document at the same time, but only see a shared strand of text between them. So they compose stories as part of one holistic whole. Or maybe you'd have a highly, highly structured FAQ editor that offers suggestions about the types of headings as you type them or an email editor that intersperses emoji or color as you're writing them. With Prosmere, the different kinds of schemas that you can pr produce are really unlimited, which is extremely powerful. With a schema in place for your document, it's time to start editing. Every change to a document, whether it's typing text into a paragraph, dragging or dropping an image, or italicizing existing text, produces a data structure in Prosmere that's called a step. The basic recipe for how you go from one document state to the next document state is by adding a step to it. Steps are created from an existing document and refer to an indexing system whereby each letter or leaf node within a document can be addressed with a number. So in our example, hello world doc, the H in hello is at index two. And similarly, the D in world starts at index 12. So if I was to type an exclamation point into a Prosmira managed editor with this document in it, the exclamation point would be represented as a replace step, which is a specific class of step at position 12 containing a string which contains the exclamation point. Prosmira's collaborative plugin tra tracks the local state of the document using a monotonic counter that starts at zero. So if you have an empty document, you have a document with a step counter of zero. For each step produced in the local document, the counter increments by one. Once a step is created, the Prosmere Collaborative plugin requires you to implement what's called uh, an authority server in order for that step to be synced remotely. The authority server's job is either to accept or reject incoming steps from multiple clients, according to whether those clients are attempting to insert steps in or out of order. Clients whose steps are acknowledged by the authority server continue on their merry way. Clients whose steps are rejected because their steps were submitted out of order and don't reflect their other peers' steps need to perform an operation that basically operates like a Git rebase. The Prosmere Collaborative plugin will take into account any steps that the local client hasn't yet fetched uh, and change the steps to reflect those other peers' steps. Once this rebase operation is complete, the client can attempt to resend their steps back to the authority server. So while Prosmere collaborative editing architecture requires a central authority server in order to order incoming steps from all connected clients, it actually only provides a reference implementation, which means you're on the hook to provide your own implementation. Uh, this reference implementation is only persisted in memory and can't really scale. Uh, and so when we set out to build collaborative editing in Oak, we knew we needed to build an authority server. We evaluated several different databases and backend architectures to support collaborative editing, but ultimately we settled on Firestore. Part of Firestore's appeal is that in addition to providing traditional database functionality, so ACID reads and writes, it also comes with a client compatible event bus built in. For Oak, which is a browser-based application, this means that we're able to read and write changes from the database directly in the browser. Oak uses Redux and Redux Saga to manage its local state. And because Firestore is an event bus as well, we can treat Firestore as if it was just another local to the browser event sync. Steps arrive from Firestore and are wrapped in Redux actions that mutate the local state. This vastly simplified the architecture we needed to build our editor. We didn't need to build out a CRUD API, an event bus, and all of the client-side adapter code you'd need to integrate with a custom backend. In the Oak editor, each time a Prosmere instance produces a new step, we serialize that step's data to JSON and attempt to write that step to Firestore using the latest known step ID plus one as the Firestore document key. For an empty document starting at step ID zero, we would attempt to write our first step with a Firestore key of one. And for the second step, we would attempt to write with a Firestore key of two and so on. If a Firestore document exists with the next most step ID key, we end the transaction. 
This signals to our client code that we need to rebase our local steps to reflect steps we haven't yet fetched from Firestore before attempting to resend our local steps again. But if the insert succeeds, our Firestore listener will see the steps as they're inserted and we will locally use this to confirm them so that subsequent steps use the new document state and step ID as the starting point. When reading steps, whether you're confirming a step you yourself inserted or receiving a step from another collaborator, the implementation looks exactly the same, a Firestore collection listener. When the steps collection is updated, we fetch any steps greater than the last step ID and apply them to the local state of the document. Because the listener executes whether or not the steps you're attempting to insert have uh, been successful, re rebasing other client steps are handled using the same listener as well. The Firestore listener acts like an event stream for any step that's been confirmed remotely by Firestore, whether those steps are your own or someone else's. And here uh, I have an, a demo of the Oak editor that's been modified to sort of show this process uh, in action. This is a simplified version of the Oak article editor. Normally, Firestore's APIs are nearly instantaneous, so I've changed it so that calls to Firestore are artificially slower than they would be in real life to make it easier to see what's going on. I've also added this text at the top here that illustrates communication with Firestore under the hood, and I've hidden other parts of the app as well. I've set up two tabs, one on the left and one on the right, that are connected to the same Oak article that was just created, meaning the step counter here starts at zero. Uh, when I type the word hello, in the headline, in the left tab, a Redux Saga detects that there are steps that haven't been sent and attempts to send them with a Firestore transaction, one for each letter. Once the Firestore transaction completes, the Firestore collection listener in the right tab detects the latest steps and applies them to the document, bringing the steps collection up to five steps stored. Because the, this editor has been artificially slowed down, we can actually simulate the case where both tabs attempt to execute a Firestore transaction at the same time. I'll type the word world in the left tab and hi in the right tab. The left tab will win, which causes the right tab to detect a conflict and rebase its steps. After that, it reattempts a transaction, inserting its steps, bringing both tabs up to sync with each other. Oak articles, of course, are not just limited to text. Because every change is a step, even pasting something like a link to an embedded tweet is modeled as a step that will be sent to and stored in Firestore and synced with both tabs. So Prismere itself doesn't mandate how collaborative editing is implemented, and you're free to choose whichever backend suits your needs. Firestore was a good fit for the New York Times because we needed to build a collaborative editor really quickly without worrying too much about how the backend would scale. While our daily number of articles in production is relatively modest, the true scale for our collaborative app is determined by the rate at which pe most people can type, which can add up quickly. Choosing Firestore allowed us to not worry about whether or not our database would handle our anticipated load. I think Firestore is also a good fit for anyone building collaborative editing that's part of a broader client-side heavy browser app. It's really freeing to think of Firestore as just another event source within your browser-based app, where mutations to your app state may come from remote changes or local changes, and you can focus your client code on what those mutations are doing rather than how they're produced. Finally, Firestore allowed us to simplify our overall architecture. We didn't need to build out a CRUD API or worry about backend race conditions. We were mostly able to focus on our app's business logic. I hope everyone is sufficiently enthralled and inspired to build a million tiny, beautiful, collaborative, rich text editors for whatever purposes suit your whims or fancy. I want to give a shout out to the Oak and publishing teams at the New York Times. I have to say that the project of building a collaborative editor was a, truly a multi-year collaborative effort in its own right, and I'm proud of the work we all jammed on together. Thank you, and go build the rich text editor of your dreams.